can you draw the original function if I give you the graph of the derivative? The answer after this video will be yes. Now, if you know how to draw the derivative from the original function, this should be easy because it's the exact reverse process. What I mean is, if I gave you the original function, wherever it reached a maximum or a minimum, you know that the derivative is zero there. So, wherever the derivative is zero, the original function had a max or a min. In fact, x intercepts on the graph of the derivative become maxes or mins on the original function. Okay? Now you'll also know that the derivative is negative if the function was decreasing and positive if the function was increasing. So if the derivative, if the graph of the derivative is below the x-axis, that's negative, it's decreasing on the original function or the original function is decreasing. And if your derivative is above the x-axis, it means your original function was increasing there. The last thing that I try to emphasize with people is that if you can estimate what the slope is on the original function, that straight up gives you the y value of the derivative. Now, you might not be able to estimate what the y value is at each of these points, especially because I haven't given you a scale. But if you ever do get given points on this grid, just know that whatever the y value is at every point, that's the slope on the original function. Cool? Cool. Let's just do this and I'll show you what I mean. X intercepts become maxes or mins. Hmm. Let's see what we can do with that. Uh, I don't know whether or not I'm going to have a max or a min at either point yet, so we'll get there. Um, if I am, uh, the original function needs to be decreasing when I'm below the x-axis. That's everywhere here. Um, now it's not decreasing at this point exactly because it's got a, the slope is zero. But it's decreasing and then it continues decreasing. That's actually a very special thing called a point of inflection. What this means is I'm decreasing until I get to that point, and I'm making sure that my x values line up, right? The slope should be zero there, it should be flat, but then it continues to decrease until I get to this point, which was, or rather is, an x-intercept on the derivative. x-intercepts on the derivative become maxes or mins. And if I'm flipping from negative to positive, that means it's a minimum. Now, the minimum does not have to be on the x-axis. In fact, I'm going to remove that and just put it somewhere else arbitrarily. Decreasing to a minimum. And then, because my derivative is positive here or above the x-axis, I know I have to be increasing. Let's see what I did. Decreasing, decreasing, flat, decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And I keep saying decreasing because it's below the x-axis here. Decreasing, 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 flat. Decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Increasing. Increasing. Ah, story checks out. Maybe I shouldn't have been so hasty here. X-intercepts on the graph of the derivative may also be points of inflection. This is not a max or a minimum. It's a point of inflection in that the slope is still zero, but it doesn't switch from decreasing to increasing the way this did. It's decreasing on the left-hand side and decreasing on the right-hand side. That's a telltale sign of a point of inflection. Cool, let's practice this a little more because I may not have done that first example justice. Where do I have my other examples here? There we go. All right, here's my graph of my derivative. <clears throat> I'm decreasing, then increasing, then decreasing. Decreasing at either end. Um, I have to... F wait. Wait a second. <laughs> decreasing from the left is this way. Decreasing. 
Oh man, if I flip from decreasing to increasing, that means I have a minimum. So I'm just gonna come down and reach a minimum there. Then I have to increase because my derivative is above the x-axis. Increase, increase, increase. And when my derivative reaches an x-intercept, that has to be a max or a min or a point of inflection. Because I flip from above the x-axis to below, that means I'm flipping from an increasing function to a decreasing function, and it ends up being a maximum. Then I continually decrease for the rest of it. If you know anything about derivatives, you'll know that the derivative of a cubic is a quadratic, and so this should make sense. If I give you that the derivative is a quadratic, you know that the original is a cubic, right? Right. Anyways, let's just do it one more time. Oh, X intercepts were maxes or mins. Uh, and this particular one switches from increasing to decreasing because it starts above and then goes below. So he's a maximum because he has to be increasing to that point and decreasing on the other side of that point. By the time I get here, I have to flatten out to a slope of zero, or rather maybe reach a minimum. And by the time I get to this point, because I have an x-intercept, I probably have to reach a minimum there as well. The reason I included this particular example is because it still follows all the rules like all derivatives would. But if you know anything about derivatives, you'll know that the derivative of negative cos x gives sine. Huh? So just like a cubic gave a quadratic here, negative or uh, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, I gave you the derivative was sine and the original function was negative cos to get there. Ah, that's right, if you know trig derivatives, You'll understand that that's completely true, and that verifies that I've done it right for you. And that verifies that my rules work, and I want you to practice doing this yourself. And if you have questions, ask me, and good luck on the test, and enjoy life.